Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving cell biology. The focus of this video will be cell communication. Cells communicate by sending and receiving signals. Signals may come from the environment or they can come from other cells. The basics behind cell communication, as well as the different ways that this cell communication can occur, as shown in the image below, will be the emphasis of this video. In order to begin cell communication, chemical signals must be transmitted across the cell membrane. Sometimes the signal itself can cross the cell membrane. Other times, as shown in the picture to the right, the signal works by interacting with receptor proteins that contact both the outside and inside of the cell. Receptor proteins on the surface of the cell membranes are very specific to different types of molecules. Notice that only hexagonally shaped proteins, shown in the picture below, would fit properly onto this specific receptor. Signals most often move through the cell by passing from protein to protein, each protein modifying the next in some particular way. Collectively, the proteins that relay a signal to its destination make up a signaling pathway. Once the signal reaches its target molecule, which is usually a protein, it works to change the behavior of the cell. Depending on the signaling molecules involved, the cell can respond in a variety of ways, as shown in the picture below. Sometimes a large molecule might be broken down. The cell might signal the release of the contents of some vesicle to the outside of the cell. The cell's shape might change, or a gene could be turned on or off. The possibilities are really countless. There are lots of different forms of cell communication that can occur. In juxtacrine signaling, cells make physical contact with one another when sending a message. The prefix juxta means next to. If you juxtapose something, you place it next to another object to show some contrast. The SA and AV nodes in the heart act as pacemakers for the heart, keeping it beating as it should. These nodes make direct contact with other cells and transmit their message through juxtacrine signaling. Neurotransmitters pass signals across a very short distance between one neuron, or brain cell, and another through what is called a synapse. This would be an example of the second classification of cell signaling covered in this video, called paracrine signaling. The last classification of cell signaling is endocrine signaling. The endocrine system in the human body passes chemical message in the form of hormones. One characteristic of this type of signaling is that there is a considerable distance that the chemical messenger travels. Hormones are passed great distances in the human body by moving along through the bloodstream. To reiterate, cell communication is a very important process. It begins with the cell membrane, where a signal is received by the cell in a process called reception. This chemical signal is passed along a pathway in a process called transduction. Finally, that pathway ends and some aspect of the cell is affected in a stage called response. This process can occur cell to cell or involve the passing of chemical messengers from one end of the body to the other. That is the end of this video involving cell signaling. If you're interested in learning about any more topics in cell biology or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.